Good morning everybody and here we are in Breville. <laughs> we arrived at 4 o'clock in the morning. 5.50. No, 5.50, wow. Okay, yeah. 4 uh, 30 when we're outside in the channel. Okay, 5.50 we arrived. And we're way too tired to make a video or to record and tell you, you know what, we arrived and the sun is rising. <laughs> at that moment, we just want to sleep and that's what we did. We just ditch everything. Look at the ropes all still around. A mess in the cockpit and the main sail, not much different. This is the time I say when you see a sailor arriving at an anchorage and have nothing tidy and just left to sleep don't judge it that's because they have probably a very rough night and no one likes to see their sails and have all the equipment suffering on the sun that's because they have a very good reason and this is us this time so the basket there we go we are moving it right now and we're going to be putting it to to fix to weld we have spoke with our friend already and uh, we like a lot his job, he welds, so we trust him to do this job again. <laughs> there we go. And this is the captain here, or the first captain. I'm gonna be second captain soon, because I'm taking over. <laughs> okay, this is our bowsprit. Unfortunately, either from the waves, or from the time, or from a very big crash that we had here, not in, on our ownership. Uh, it started to have some cracks. The welds are cracking, the metal plates are cracking here, and also the welds are cracking here and here. You can see the welds cracking. I noticed, and here the other crack, I noticed the last time we were sailing that uh, it moves and it bends upwards. And after I noticed these cracks here, this means that it's already compromised and we cannot use our Zenaker. We're gonna remove it now and try to weld it, also reinforce it. It's a bit windy. Uh, I... Jesus Christ, I did this. Your uh, wax is so dramatic, huh? That's <laughs> a job. A, I thought I did a very bad scratch on the boat, but it's just the wax of Conceição. So uh, we are quite stressed because it's a bit windy and our chain is only secured here and on the other cleats. Of course, this is not, uh, this is not uh, where the stress goes. Uh, we have our snubber on, which you can see on this rope. And I hope that everything is gonna be okay and it doesn't slip. Uh, this chain is 25 euros per meter. And we are on a 14 meters muddy bottom and I really hope it doesn't go in because I don't know how we're gonna retrieve it. I would be gladly pay a dry diver to do so. Okay, so now let's start. looks so naked without the bowsprit. Okay, Orestes repaired our uh, bowsprit. Uh, I think he did a good job. We did reinforce the points that they were that they were bedding. So what we did is this is how the spray hood used to be. And we added this extra inox plate to reinforce it and welded it. You can see that the welds look pretty good. This is the point that it was breaking. So we will repair it and also we remade the, the screw holes for the tick. A tick, tick we're gonna probably add the roco. Tick is too expensive and difficult to find. We're gonna probably do it in Crete together with the other repairs after the crash. I think he did a good job on the material he had and he didn't add a lot of weight on the spray hood. Now the main problem is not the design itself of the construction. The main problem is that the the Zenaker pulls from here and you have all this distance up to here that is the point that it keeps the construction down so it tends to have forces bedding upwards this is why it cracked uh, I'm gonna try to add some Dyneema rope and support it on the hull so it doesn't pull the doesn't bend the inox but I do think with after the repair we are not gonna have problems we're gonna probably try it on the way to Crete 
We are leaving Friday and probably after 10 days we're gonna haul out again to repair our hull. Now is we're gonna attach a safety line on this. We're gonna lower it to the dinghy. And once I come here with the dinghy and we have it on the dinghy, you're gonna pull the nose, I'm gonna control the back, and okay. first we're gonna control the sides. So first we're gonna connect these pieces yeah. and then the bottom piece. Okay. And then tightening. I might need you to pass number 17. Well, uh, I don't know where they are. So we have these bolts. So I'm gonna need you to pass them. Instructions to for dummies. you all. <laughs> so we are preparing now to head to Krita. Uh, we're filling up water. Our cool water maker haven't arrived yet so we still have to carry. We got very comfortable with it and our toilet spends more water than a princess does. So we have to fill up constantly. <laughs> and there goes the captain whenever he wants to come back <laughs> with the bottle of water. You only got uh, 25, 225 liters uh, uh, bottles, so it takes us quite a few rides. This is gonna be the last one. It's the fourth one or the fifth. I don't remember. I stopped counting. <laughs> Seems like there is something with the outboard. Ah, boat. There is always something going on. You see, we are very close to this boat here sometimes that one there so we're anchored there in the end of nowhere uh, where we will avoid other boats <laughs> but um, you have to come now here on 2.5 meters so we can fill up the water uh, fill up easier let's say make shorter trips because from here to there it's quite a mile already or half a mile actually half a mile and uh, every time we do one ride, we have to refill outboard. Yes, it takes a whole container of the outboard just for one way and back. Oh, gas is expensive right now. Hello, slave. Hey, babe. We crossed the last ride of water. Last ride, are you sure? Yeah, I hope so. We've been doing this all morning. If you didn't have a princess toilet, <laughs> You don't have to carry so much water. <laughs> okay, pass me a rope. The system to get. The aloe vera you want to go is the one that is yep. uh, far away. This uh -huh. is 30 minutes walk. Oh. <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> you need to leave the camera. Maybe I can. Yeah! No, that's not good. <sighs> 